Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. So thank you once again, Peter, for suggesting this video to me. It's from Cosmic Skeptic. Well, I guess it is, sort of. That's not his channel name anymore. It goes by his real name, I guess. Anyway, he made a video recently discussing his thoughts reflecting about veganism now that he's been no longer vegan all these months or years or whenever he left and quit. Anyway, I'm not putting any hate on him about that. I responded to him back in the day. If you want to see my links to those response videos, they're up here down there. Just look for them. Anyway, what he just said recently the other day just blew my mind. It, sh it just really like solidified the idea to me that he really never understood what veganism is because he presents this argument and I can't believe this guy is he really like Oxford educated as we'll see these are horribly flawed logical arguments about veganism that end with a conclusion that it's somehow wrong or immoral or inconsistent for a vegan to be a bodybuilder apparently vegans are second-class citizens and there's all these restrictions as to what we can pursue in life let's check them out I started to realize that I don't think you can concretely hold to this principle that unnecessary infliction of suffering on animals is always wrong. So this is the bizarre definition of veganism that he's holding to in this video. This is what he believes veganism means. This is what he believes vegans, all his vegans are following. As we'll see, this bizarre definition of veganism leads to some absurd consequences. But before you guys argue that I'm taking him out of context, let's hear him one more time to find veganism. I don't think you can concretely hold to this principle that unnecessary infliction of suffering on animals is always wrong. Aside from the point that he used the word always in his definition here, and I don't like definitions that have the word always because all you need is this one exception to the rule and you've brought down the whole thing that you're trying to debunk here. But anyway, let's move on to his, his concept here of veganism because that's a strange, bizarre definition. I'm not sure where he came up with it. He should know. He's from the great Britain Islands, right? There's a definition that started there in the 1940s that has nothing to do with what he said here. It's a stance against animal cruelty and exploitation as far as possible and practicable. Unnecessary infliction of suffering on animals is always wrong. I'll tell you why. Uh, I, it started when I was thinking about the concept of vegan junk food. So that is food that you don't need to eat to be healthy and might actually be bad for your health, you know, vegan chocolate, vegan cakes, whatever. And the sort of vegan approach to, to eating these products. I mean, I don't see a lot of vegans condemning the concept of eating vegan junk food. And why should that even happen? Why should people who are against animal cruelty and exploitation be against having, like, say, some dairy-free Ben and Jerry's or some chocolate chip cookies that don't have any dairy in them? I'm not sure what that has to do with being against animal cruelty and exploitation. Again, we can debate the health issues, but that's not what he's talking about here. He just makes it sound like that there's some kind of problem, an inherent problem of people who identify as vegan eating food food that's not considered to be health food. The concept of crop deaths comes up a lot in this vegan discussion, and it's kind of memed upon by the vegan community because, of course, it's ridiculous to suggest, as many people do, that you shouldn't be a vegan because don't you know that animals are killed in crop production? It's a silly thing to say because we kill far more animals in the production of crops that we then feed to livestock. Well, great. I'm glad he's not now one of these knucklehead advocates of the combine harvester argument, so we can agree on that. But why is he even bringing this up in the first place? However, there is a crop deaths related consideration that we should reflect on, and it's to do with this concept of unnecessary vegan food. And like I say, it started with the junk food consideration, but a better example, a more concrete example, and one that I spoke to Peter Singer in my second podcast with him about, is the concept of a vegan bodybuilder. All right, so let's keep adding to the second class citizen list that he's making here. So not only is it somehow wrong for vegans to eat something that might be considered to be junk food versus healthy food, now he's going to argue that it's wrong for vegans to be bodybuilders. So a bodybuilder, at least when they're, when they're bulking, when they're trying to grow, is somebody who will intentionally eat an extra maybe two, three hundred calories every single day, maybe even more. And they're doing so for reasons that, strictly speaking, are completely unnecessary to their health. So you're saying all eating that vegans do must only be what is necessary for our health? You don't need to grow to remain healthy. You can eat your maintenance calories for the rest of your life 
and be perfectly fine and, and thrive indeed. Ah, I get it. So when you sign up for being vegan, you have committed yourself to a lifetime of being kind of skinny and you can't get bulky or even become overweight. So if you're bodybuilding, if you're trying to build muscle, you are eating food that you do not need to eat to be healthy. All right. All, yeah. Bodybuilders of all diets at times when they're bulking eat excess calories. So how is that a problem for the vegans? Here's the thing. So long as animals are killed in crop production, then as long as you're eating food that is unnecessary to your health, you are causing unnecessary suffering and death to animals. So that's the conclusion of your argument here, is that if you're eating excess calories, whether you're bulking up or overweight, you're causing unnecessary, unnecessary harm and suffering to animals. Well, again, if you have a definition of veganism that requires perfectionism or some kind of harm reductionitarianism, which you seem to be advocating, then maybe you'd have a point. But once again, the definition of veganism requires no such thing as being perfect or harm reductionitarianism. That's your own personal custom definition of veganism, that's going to lead to some pretty absurd consequences. As I'm going to point out in a second. That means that if you are a vegan bodybuilder, if you're eating a few hundred extra calories every day on purpose of vegan food, you are causing unnecessary suffering and death to animals. Unnecessary death and suffering to animals is wrong, is, is always wrong. But if I held to that principle consistently, I would have to condemn, for example, vegan bodybuilders. So now I need to stop and point out how horribly flawed this argument and reasoning are about vegan bodybuilders. And then after that, I'll show you the absurd consequences that his reasoning leads to. But let's point out the obvious flaw. And I bet some of you guys saw it along the way here too, when he's talking about bodybuilders, when they're bulking, they, ex they consume excess calories and what's required for health. Well, bodybuilders, as you might know, and I'm sure he knows this too, he's not that dumb, aren't always bulking. They have other phases, like cutting phases, and he conveniently does not mention that phase when they are consuming fewer calories than what their body needs to maintain health. So by his own logic, they are harming fewer animals than they would have to just to maintain their body weight when, yeah, when they're cutting. So how come he doesn't mention that? So if you look at all, average it out over a year's time, you would stand to reason that more or less, it would probably just, it would average out. The bulking and cutting would kind of balance each other. There should be no moral quandary for vegan bodybuilders. What I'm trying to say is that the principle that causing unnecessary harm and suffering to animals is always morally wrong entails the condemnation of vegan bulking bodybuilders. So now I'm going to show you how absurd his argument is too. This whole concept of doing things that are not necessary, which might cause harm to animals, not through slaughter, but through accidental, unintentional harm. Let me show you how silly this is. So by his line of reasoning, he should have problems with all sorts of people, not just vegan bodybuilders. Let's take his example here of consuming more calories than what's necessary for health. Well, how about people who are overweight by, for whatever reasons, maybe they're trying to lose weight, maybe they're not. So are you weight shaming heavy vegans? Is that your thing here? Obese and overweight vegans are somehow immoral or inconsistent people because they're consuming more calories than what's necessary for health. Well, again, you know, overweight and obese non-vegans, totally cool because they don't have any moral beliefs to begin with. And why end it on a ban on vegan weightlifting? Why not ban vegan running? Because running is not necessary. We don't need to run in order to be healthy, right? But I was a runner for maybe six, seven years, and I know for a fact I've stepped on many bugs and insects. I remember one time almost stepping and crushing a snake's head. I mean, that's unnecessary harm, so we should just sit around, right? We shouldn't run. We should walk. Well, on second thought, maybe walking outside in the streets and trails is bad too. It's not necessary. We could just walk in our homes, right? Because you know when you go on walks, you're probably stepping on bugs, causing more unnecessary harm, right? So instead of running or walking to work, maybe I'll just drive to work. But driving is fraught with all sorts of problems as far as causing unintentional, unnecessary harm. First of all, yeah, you could drive over bugs and small animals, and that's unnecessary. If you weren't driving, those animals would still be alive. And also, cars themselves are problematic. It could be really difficult to find a car that has a vegan steering column and vegan tires. So I guess vegans aren't allowed to drive either? And it seems like gardening would be out of the questions for vegans too, because it causes unnecessary harm to animals and insects. For instance, when I water, 
I don't see any bugs or anything messing around, but I, as soon as I water, I see like a whole bunch of ants start panicking. They're going crazy. I'm causing them to suffer. And when I weed, sometimes I'll pull out a worm with the weeds too. And that's unnecessary, right? They would have been happy and totally undisturbed if I wasn't out gardening. Furthermore, it should follow according to his line of reasoning that vegans should not have children because when you bring children into the world, even vegan children who aren't going to consume animal products, they're still going to consume consume plants and according to him all these animals get harmed when plants are produced so you don't want that to happen you don't need that to happen you don't need to have children so according to his harm reduction etarianism kind of philosophy here vegans shouldn't have children because we're supposed to be the highest moral beings and not cause any unnecessary animal harm so you can see how quite easy it is to reduce his argument to absurdity by his own reasoning if vegans goal is to unnecessary infliction of suffering on animals is always wrong. Then it wouldn't be morally permissible for vegans to do all sorts of things such as bodybuild or be overweight or garden or be runners or even walking and driving are out of the question it seems. So the problem is the, with the way he defined veganism here. It's an absurd definition that leads to absurd consequences. Once again, let's look at the vegan society's definition of veganism and the key words here are as far as possible and practicable avoiding all forms of cruelty and exploitation to animals meaning you have the ability as a vegan to live a more or less normal life have children drive body build avoiding all forms of cruelty as far as possible and practicable practicable it doesn't say that you're going to avoid all unnecessary harm absolutely if you need to consume a few extra calories because you're overweight or you're a bodybuilder or a runner who just finished a marathon do it it says nothing in this definition of veganism that vegans are responsible for the accidental and unintentional harm that is part of modern agriculture agricultural practices. Those are agricultural issues. They're not vegan issues. It says nothing about being a perfect being where no living thing is harmed. Again, a lot of anti-vegans or non-vegans conflate the issue or the definition of veganism with the ahimsa concept from Jainism. That seems to be what he's talking about that one must not harm or kill any living sentient being. That's not what it says in the definition of veganism. And yet it seems just intuitively the case to me, and I would imagine most vegans feel the same way, that vegan bodybuilding isn't unethical. In fact, a lot of vegans point to vegan bodybuilders as examples of what veganism can do. Exactly, because vegans are not limited. We're not second-class citizens. If a vegan wants to pursue bodybuilding, he or she is free to. And if you look at the definition of veganism, you'll see that being a vegan bodybuilder does not go against the essential component of taking a stance against animal cruelty and exploitation by consuming a fully plant-based diet. It doesn't say that we have to minimize the amount of harm that's contained in these plants that we eat. It's funny, when Peter, my moderator, forwarded me this video to check out, Peter wrote, yeah, um, Cosmic Skeptic doesn't know what veganism is. Yeah, it's quite apparent. He has no idea what veganism is. He has this weird idea that vegans have this belief of unnecessary infliction of suffering on animals is always wrong. When in fact, that's not the case. It's his own custom-made definition of veganism, which, as I showed here, leads to absurd conclusions, absurd consequences of vegans can't have kids, vegans can't be runners, and a whole host of other things. I was wondering why a couple Fridays ago on my live stream, someone came and said pretty much the same thing, that it's wrong for vegans to be overweight or bodybuilders because of the excess calories and the extra unnecessary animals that might get killed by these extra calories. Now I know they got from listening to Cosmic Skeptics, so apparently some of you guys buy it. If so, comment down below, or if you think this is a bunch of nonsense, as I think I very thoroughly and easily showed you here, comment down below. Either way, if you want to express your uh, point of view, you can also come to my Friday live stream every Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, See you there. So until next time, remember guys, it doesn't suck being vegan.